There's a shitload of diets out there. From keto, paleo, intermittent, high fat, low carbs, plant based, there's even a what would Jesus eat diet. I've tried a bunch of these diets, some did show some results, but some I honestly did it because I was purely drawn by the hype. Recently I've come to the realization that we're all just genetically different. The potency of each diet then will vary profoundly based on the program that was encoded in our genome the moment we're born. What works up for one person might work completely against another person, and what my body likes and doesn't like inherently is extremely personal. When when I realized this, I felt like it was kind of absurd for me to like try out these diets that I wasn't even sure will work optimally for my fitness goals or not. So to skip the trial and error, I took a DNA test last year to look at what's the most optimized way to reach my fitness goals that is very unique to my DNA profile. Despite taking the test last year, I wasn't disciplined at all in following the plan, mainly because my office was spoiling me with providing 3 meals a day to me at work. So now that we're on lockdown and I don't have access to this type of luxury anymore, I thought it's a great opportunity for me to revisit my DNA plan and to completely control the type and the portion of the food I put in my body during this whole period. I took my DNA test with a company based in London called DNA Fit. How it worked was pretty straightforward. They mailed me a testing kit, did a simple mouth swap test, mailed the sample of my saliva back to them for them to process in the lab and within the next few weeks I got a report back from them with my complete genetic reports. What I liked about DNA Fit is they provided free consultation calls with a nutritionist and a fitness coach to go through my reports in detail. I really value that because to be honest, it can be completely overwhelming just going through these pages of reports that were full of biological and scientific terms. There's a lot of information, but there are a few key things that really caught my attention. First, it turns out the best diet that suits me is the Mediterranean diet, which comprises of 40% carbs, 40% fat, and 20% protein. This is good news because I always thought I had to avoid carbs and fat because the general kind of notion is that they will make you fat. But a term Turns out my sensitivity towards carbs is medium and my sensitivity towards fat is low which means that eating this type of food won't make me gain weight so easily. A nutritionist specifically mentioned that my genetics makes me a perfect type for a plant-based diet. I've been going almost 90% plant-based for a while now and hearing that confirms that this is the lifestyle that really suits me going forward. My second highlight was I found out that I'm actually lactose intolerant, which is pretty crazy to hear because I grew up my whole life not knowing that dairy was bad for me. But now that when I thought about it, it kind of makes sense because my mom told me when I was a baby, I would always refuse drinking milk, I would always cry, bawl my eyes out, so she had to fit me protein shake instead. My mom has prepared me for the gains life since I was really young. The third similar surprising finding is I don't react that well to caffeine. That means that my body is metabolic metabolizing caffeine at a much lower rate than average and I have a higher risk of developing high blood pressure and hypertension by including caffeine in my diet. Doesn't mean that I have to eliminate caffeine completely, it just means there's a limit to how much caffeine I should take per day. The moment I realized that the next day when I had a second cup of coffee, I noticed my chest pain, my heart started to pound really quickly and it's crazy to realize this because similar to milk, the discomfort was something I already kind of experienced but I never knew what was the root cause of all this. When it comes to my fitness report, I learned that essentially we can be categorized into three different types, whether you're a power bias, endurance bias, or somewhat in between. Power bias means that you'll benefit more from your exercise if you use low reps, heavier weights. In the contrary, if you're more endurance bias, you'll benefit more from low weights, but more reps. So it turns out that I'm somewhat in between. I'm also blessed with a fast recovery gene, so I don't need to rest for that long before going for my next training session. It is saying though that I need more antioxidant and omega-3 to prevent me from getting injury because my gene apparently has a higher risk of getting injured in my exercise. Which is interesting to think about. I recover quickly but I'm also prone to get injured in my training. I don't know how these contrasting facts are actually kind of relate to each other. So to get started on the challenge, my nutritionist gave me a 7 day meal plan with exact recipe on like what to get for breakfast, lunch, dinner, and snacks in between. So I'm kind of a freak when it comes to time optimizing. I don't want to spend an hour for each meal just cooking. So I did meal prep, which means for the whole seven days for that one week, I will have the same lunch, I will have the same meal for dinner instead of having different meal for each day. Don't get me wrong, I love good food, but if I were to choose, food is probably here and my time is over here. So that's why efficiency comes first. And I was preparing my meal, I 
realized this perfectionist beast just like came out of the cage. I will follow my plan to the precision. I use a scale and I'll make sure that for each meal that I follow exactly the plan. How many grams of tofu, how many grams of beans, how many grams of vegetables. Which leads to a really stressful period for me every time I have to do grocery shopping. Because I will always try to find the exact item and I'll find myself getting lost in different aisles. I know for a lot of people, grocery shopping is a leisure activity. For me, I just never, I could never get that. It's just a lot of mental power exertion. So this is how my day looks like on average. For breakfast, I have tofu scramble with mushroom, avocado, and some spinach. Sometimes I alternate with my recent favorite, which is a toast with peanut butter and frozen bananas. And I'll have my first snack of the day, which is usually nuts and fruits. And then I have lunch, which is the heaviest meal for the day. And then around 3 to 4 p.m. I have my second snack which is my protein smoothie that consists of protein powder, plant-based milk, and some fruits. And then around 7 to 8 p.m. I'll have my dinner which is a lighter version of my lunch. It's usually salad or complex carbs with a bunch of vegetables. It's just really gratifying to know that in this especially challenging period to stay fit and healthy, this plan allows me to actually thrive. Why I think it's effective is because I don't rely on my willpower to choose between healthy and healthy options. When I open my fridge, there's the healthy snack just waiting for me. Along the way, it just became a habit. Like, okay, 10 a.m., I'll go to the kitchen and then grab my nuts and fruits. 4 p.m., I'll just make my protein smoothie. So I literally have no options to eat junk food. I also try to not be too rigid and be too hard on myself during this challenging time. So once a week, my roommates and I have developed this ritual that we will order in or cook something really nice for each other. We'll have pizza or like green curry and Thai food, which of course are not the healthiest options for my DNA or for any types of DNA profile but you know I let myself to indulge in this moment we deserve junk food tonight okay a little bit indulgent a little bit of indulgence when it comes to fitness and exercising, this is the part where I think I did do so well. The thing is, the original fitness plan that was prescribed to me was made for a gym workout where I had to do weights three times a week and then two times of cardio. But now that I'm in lockdown, I had to ask my fitness coach to adjust it to a home workout. And when I saw the plan, it kind of looks like a normal HIIT types of training. In the end, I just followed one of the fitness app programs called Freelytics because it's, just easy, cause it's a lot easier to have the app tell you what to do instantly. And mid month my roommates became a lot more active in doing group workout and I ended up just doing a lot of this group resistance training with them. I still do like body weight workout frequently about five to six times a week. It's just I don't think it's anything special that is custom made to my DNA profile but again looking at my genetic report that I'm not really biased towards power and endurance like I think I guess resistance training also kind of works in my favor or I'm just like justifying how everything is working for me just to kind of place myself. But yeah, definitely once I can go to the gym again, it's something that I want to explore more. Following the exact recommendation in terms of the number of reps, muscle group that I need to work out for the exact day, and how long I need to rest in between. So overall, I did see results in my physique. Although it's not profoundly transformational, I think the changes are quite subtle because my body fat was already in around 15%. I ended up at 61 kilos and 13.8% body fat. And when I checked myself out in the mirror, I could see like a better definition around my belly area. But most importantly, I just feel healthier and fitter during this period. I'm not really sure if it's really because of the plan that is custom made to my DNA or just because the fact that I'm eating healthy in general. General. But hey, I just love the fact that I don't have to make any guesses on whether a certain type of food is good for me. So the verdict is definitely recommend you to take the DNA test. We're all just programmed differently. We genetically predisposed to respond differently to different types of food. So highly recommend you to understand your body really well to the genetic and the cellular level. At the end of the day, health is the most important. So I definitely spend time in investing in our precious assets. But most importantly, I hope everyone is staying safe and healthy during this period. Period. Make sure not to only look at your physical health but your mental health as well. And I'll see you in the next video.